Hello and welcome. You are watching We on Fine Print. I am Krishna Kumar. A diplomatic leak has left the British government embarrassed. Over the weekend, a series of diplomatic cable leaked. They were written by Kim Darroch. Sir Kim Darroch. He is Britain's ambassador to America. And in these cables, he called the Trump administration inept and clumsy. Basically, the British ambassador insulted America's president, Donald Trump. The story has dominated the British press. Sample some of them. A BBC analysis claims that the damage of this leak is considerable. America and Britain have had a rocky relationship since President Trump took over. BBC says that President Trump is pretty thin-skinned when the verbal arrows are aimed at him. Investigations are underway and catching the culprit will not be easy. The article says that there are a large number of potential suspects. These cables were seen by scores of people. Anyone could have leaked it. ITV News carried a long profile of Ambassador Kim Darrock, Sir Kim Darrock. Apparently, he has been caught criticizing Trump before as well. The reporter says that after Trump's victory, the ambassador wrote a secret memo. He had suggested then that the UK could exploit the American president's character and inexperience in office. Since the story broke, it has taken several twists and turns. And our correspondent Mandy Clark reports from London. The damage is done. British Ambassador Sir Kim Daroch's assessment of the Trump administration was hardly flattering. His notes about the Trump White House during the period 2017 to now have strained US-UK relations. He wrote, we don't really believe this administration is going to become substantially more normal, less dysfunctional, less unpredictable, less faction-driven, less diplomatically clumsy and inept, unquote. But the assessment was in a secret cable he sent to his bosses back in England. They were never meant to be shared in public. They are diplomatic telegrams meant for official conversations. Britain's Foreign Office has now begun investigations into the leaked memos of their ambassador. In an attempt at damage control, British Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt said he did not agree with all of Kim Daroch's comments. It's a personal view and uh, there'll be many people in this building who don't agree with that view and indeed I don't agree with some of the views that we saw in those letters. I've said I think that um, the US administration is highly effective and we have the warmest of relationships and a partnership based on standing up for shared values. British Trade Secretary Liam Fox defended their ambassador and said whoever released the emails had maliciously undermined the US-UK defense and security relationship. But U.S. President Donald Trump is angry. We've had our little ins and outs with, uh, with a couple of countries, and I would say that the U.K. Uh, and the ambassador has not served the U.K. well. I can tell you that. We're not, we're not big fans of that man, and he has not served the U.K. well. Daroch was appointed to his role in Washington several months before Mr. Trump entered the White House and shocked everyone. In all likelihood, the next British Prime Minister will be under pressure to find a replacement to smooth over relations with the United States. With Mandy Clark in London, Bureau Report, we on World is One. And now I'm being joined by our London Bureau Chief uh, Mandy Clark, live here on We on Fine Print, along with Simon Marks, uh, joining us uh, live uh, from uh, Washington. Uh, Mandy, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, how are things in England? Uh, clearly, uh, Jeremy Hunt, uh, when he's uh, uh, you know, sort of doing damage control, is, 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 is visibly awkward. It is. It's incredibly awkward for this to be released. It's a concern for the British uh, Foreign Office because the point of these uh, cables is that the uh, ambassador feels that they can tell the unvarnished truth as they see it. Now, of course, the, the, his bosses in London may feel differently, but without that freedom to speak clearly uh, and effectively to, to express their concerns, uh, it's a worry that this will really stymie what uh, ambassadors do, which is tell, tell their view from from essentially uh, the ground. Uh, of course, it's an incredibly awkward situation between the two countries now. Jeremy Hunt trying to smooth things over. Of course, he is also vying to be the next prime minister. Uh, so it, it, it's even more difficult for him to make it absolutely clear that these relations are rock solid. It's one of the main relationships that Britain will be looking to as they exit the European Union for those trade deals. So more now more than ever, they really need... Uh, 
stronger relationships with the U.S. and not the opposite. Oh, absolutely. Simon Marks, uh, that is the, the predicament of the United Kingdom. They need a strong relationship with the U.S., especially uh, at this time. Um, and the reaction from the U.S. has been uh, uh, unsurprising. Uh, Donald Trump slamming uh, the U.K.'s ambassador to the U.S. Uh, but uh, what exactly uh, is up in Washington in terms of... Uh, uh, help us understand how exactly do you think the, the U.S. government is planning to react to this in a more uh, formal and a full-fledged way? Well, look, I think there's an enormous amount of shock here because up until now there hasn't been a word of criticism from the Trump administration uh, for Sir Kim Darroch, the British ambassador uh, to the United States, who served during the tail end of the Obama administration, has served uh, during the Trump administration, and was the architect in many ways of President Trump's state visit to the UK just a few weeks ago. But the gloves are off now. Uh, we've all seen the memos that traditionally we would never never have seen because, uh, as Mandy was saying, ambassadors need to know that they've got the ability to reflect the opinions that they and their staffs have uh, reached in uh, diplomatic uh, language that doesn't go public and that is privately held and passed on uh, to their political masters back at home. But we've also now seen President Trump, as you heard there, engaged uh, in a very undiplomatic character assassination of Sir Kim Darroch. So at this point, how on earth Sir Kim continues to serve here in Washington. He was due to be leaving next January, but that's a very long time uh, to wait, especially given the political transition that is underway in London. Whether Boris Johnson or Jeremy Hunt uh, become Prime Minister of the UK, the trade issue is going to be absolutely uh, right on the front burner in terms of the relationship between the US and the UK, and it will be up to the British British ambassador to try and advance those conversations. How does Kim Darroch do that now uh, after the language that Donald Trump has used about him? Right, and that's assuming that uh, Sir Kim Darroch is going to retain his position uh, for, uh, for the foreseeable future, which, as you're rightly pointing out, is not the case, uh, uh, really. Uh, Mandy, if I, were to, uh, if I were to bring things back to you, uh, you know, Britain is in the middle of a, of a mess that it's continuing to sort out on a daily basis. Uh, but uh, how about uh, recalling Sir Kim Darroch? I think we'll have to wait and see. I think in almost many ways it's going to be an untenable position. Uh, naturally, uh, it might naturally just come when that new prime minister uh, takes over, whether it is Boris Johnson or Jeremy Hunt. Uh, I think that will just be a natural change of guard where we will see that uh, a shift in uh, the ambassador. Uh, it would be very difficult to see how he could stay on. Uh, it, at this very critical juncture with Brexit and those trade negotiations taking top right. seat here in Britain. So we'll have to wait and see. But in all likelihood, we can expect it with the change of prime minister. All right, then. Uh, Simon, I wanted to ask you as well. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a history of uh, leaked diplomatic uh, cables, especially uh, from the U.S. that's gotten the U.S. In, 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 into knots. Uh, uh, the watershed moment really being the, in the WikiLeaks uh, of uh, 2010 that, uh, that sort of uh, was described by the U.S. State Department that time as an attack on U.S. foreign policy. How devastating do you think this particular cable leak is in the context of the history of cable leaks? Well, I think substantially less devastating than, for example, the WikiLeaks uh, dump, because that was such a substantial uh, document dump uh, compared to the relatively limited nature uh, of this leak. But look, it's not the leak in and of itself uh, that is so extraordinary. It's that the views of Sir Kim Darroch uh, are broadly reflected throughout Washington, D.C. He's not saying anything incredibly controversial in those cables. Uh, if you took a look in the private diplomatic bags of of many uh, ambassadors to Washington, you'd probably find them reflecting very similar views back to their capitals. But the question is, politically, what may have taken place here? Was this uh, an attempt by supporters of Brexit back in the UK uh, to derail the idea of a pro-EU voice, uh, Sir Mark Sedwell, the Cabinet Secretary in Britain, from becoming the next ambassador to the United States? Do the uh, remain 
grain uh, faction uh, within British politics want to see someone cut from their cloth. You know, Donald Trump once suggested Nigel Farage, the leader of the UK Brexit Party, should be the country's ambassador to the United States. Has there been skullduggery at work here from either side of the Atlantic to try and advance an eventuality that looks more like that? Try and advance an eventuality that looks more like that. Uh, Simon Marks uh, joining us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you, Simon, uh, for being with us. And uh, Mandy Clark joining us live from London. Thank you, Mandy, for taking time to be with us here on We on Fine Print.